James Proctor's having an incredible season. I'd say he's easily the contender for breakout player of the year. He's rededicating himself to the tour, putting himself in opportunities, and he's really thriving. I think this course plays really well to Corey's strengths. I mean, he's got a lot of power and, you know, the putt goes with you everywhere. So obviously if he's feeling comfortable in the greens, he's going to be a player in the end. It is going to take Adam another hot round to get a win. The field's too good, plain and simple. Obviously, I like Adam's chances going into the final round because of the way that he has closed out events in the past experienced winner. We've seen some fireworks from Chase and third card this season. It's really anyone's ball game, but it's going to take a hot round for somebody on this lead card to win this tournament. For Aaron to win, he's got to just keep doing the same thing he's been doing, and then it's just going to be about cashing those putts. At the end of the day, you have to do that. There's no way, I think, to drive it close enough after what we saw at OTB that you can get away with it without being strong in those moments with those putts. I think he'll be stronger having gone through that just recently. I don't know that I'm, I would lay down a bet at this point. It's, I don't see a clear favorite, I'll say that. I think it's gonna be about getting out of the gates quick with a birdie, getting off to a nice clean start, and then just kind of riding the wave. I'm not ready to make any kind of prediction. I'm ready to watch this thing happen. Hello and welcome to final round coverage from the 2023 Portland Open presented by Latitude 64. We're on the Glendevere East course. You're watching the Disc Golf Pro Tour on Joe Mas Pro with Nate Sexton, Jeremy Coley, and Paul Ulibar. I'm excited, guys. I have not seen this round. I do not know about the results. This is going to be pure honesty with my reactions. So uh, we're doing this again. We're trying this. We did this last year at this event, and it was a lot of fun. And I hope for the same type of fireworks that we had last season. And remember, we're going to fly one lucky Patreon member and a friend out to Vermont for the 2023 PDGA Disc Golf World Championships. You'll stay on site at Smuggler's Notch so you can enjoy VIP access all week long, including premier access throughout the event. Meet and greets with players, VIP concierge service, exclusive merch like a squatch bag and tons more. It's incredible. all on the website. It's get incredible. out, get on the website. You can get, learn more about that giveaway. 11,245 feet. This course is humongous. I love what you talked about the distance to par ratio that obviously would go to the West course as far as how far it plays, but still 11,000 feet speaks for itself. There's a lot of long shots, placement shots, out of bounds, big Douglas firs. So many things to contend with. The wind? Uh, does it? Was it a little windy today? I don't know. Was it? Yeah, a little it sure windy. was. It, it's it, maybe even moderately windy at times. It, it was the windiest day yet. But the temperatures were beautiful once again. I mean, Oregon, Portland specifically has been delivering beautiful weather all week, and these guys have been delivering the goods here. Aaron Gossage still off the tee, just kicking butt on the field. He is just throwing so many shots in C1 and C2. Corey Ellis has been battling, right? He's been taking some big numbers, but then calming himself down and then resetting, getting back into the birdie zone. And he has been all over the course. He's just getting birdies everywhere. James Proctor clawing his way back up here. Look at that C1X putts, 97%, and he's not even leaving the field, but that's uh, it's good numbers. And C2 putts, 50%. Wow. Well, you said it in the beginning. These guys are going to have to get off to a heart's hot start. Hole one is a uh, par four, 670, out of bounds left, out of bounds right, right to left crosswind. Coming into this green is going to be tricky. Lots of elevation, obviously out of bounds the whole way around it. And it's perched up there on that little high rise. Minocqua, Wisconsin, sponsored by Disraft. Give it up. Adam Hammes with the hot 10 under round to go from chase card to leading the event by one shot. And even with his big forehand, he elects to go backhand turnover. Is this holding? Yes, it is holding the turn. This is a bomb of a drive. Way up around the corner. Perfect position. That's inside 250 of the pin, I would imagine. 
Yeah, the only thing I would say about that one is depending on how far right he is, he might be cut off to like a, a really sharp hyzer into the green with the sidearm. Gosh, it's tight with the forehand. Does that beat the corner? It obliterates it. Oh, wow. Okay, that was skating by. Sponsored by Discraft. Give it up for Corey Ellis. Different announcer. I don't know what I don't know what happened to Michael. But yeah, that's a that's Lon L. I think he had to work today. Oh really? I mm -hmm. saw him I saw him early, but yeah. Okay. That's Lon L Green on the mic this time. Corey, this is looking beautiful. Wow. And that's a good angle. That's what you're talking yes. about, Paul. You're not too tight to the right. He has any option he wants approaching that green. So we've had the cut down to the top 40 something players, 48 players, 45, 45 players. And this one's looking like an OB stroke. If, unless it can bite. Oh, oh wow. look at that. The widest part of the fairway. So the scoring average went from 4.3 to 3.7 by just losing the lower 90% or the lower 90 players in the field. Wow. Great angle coming in. I was completely wrong with that. Little look at the wind yeah, speed. Yeah, no kidding. Shirt isn't that tight, but it is ripping off of a off his back there. And Ooh. just putting the brakes on once again for Proctor. That'll be a look right around the circle's edge. Very challenging putt coming up for James. This needs to drop. It can get squilly down there. Yeah, there's going to be a couple players having to earn their birdie coming up here on the green. Let's see if Corey can put one close. Oh, look at this. This is a chip shot. Corey loves the standstill. Goes putter. Does this have enough? It's, yeah, that looks good. That drive is nuts. I mean, all of them were. Yeah. I kind of feel like all four of those are, are some of the best I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, right. Those would all be the best drive in the group if they weren't all in this group. Decent effort for Adam. Off high left, though. Yeah, I think they're both going to be very disappointed with that result after those drives. So that's under 250, I bet, into the pin for, for both of them. Yeah. Well, maybe not Proctor, but I think he put it in a very good spot for his comfortable hyzer there. That's a good putt there from Corey. A little farther than I thought he was, actually. I thought he was in, in the bullseye there. And Gossage also in for the birdie. So now all of a sudden we've got a three-way tie at the top. Proctor will be playing catch up if can't afford to miss too many of those putts when uh, the top guys are all making theirs. But he doesn't miss too many opportunities on the green. Very smooth putter. I I don't I mean like we talked about we've mentioned it over and over again about how J how James is rededicating himself to the tour. I don't really know what that means. I keep saying it. He's just on tour. You yeah. know, he's had other jobs before. He's on tour now. I don't really know why that's made such a big difference, but, I mean, he really hasn't ever showed this type of consistency on the highest stage. And this season, all of a sudden, he's doing it. I don't know. I mean, what do you mean you don't know why, how it makes such a difference? It's being out there every single day, living, breathing the game on the tour. That makes all the difference, I think. Yeah. He's talented, Good you know, point. super talented. <laughs> Good he's point. out there. He's, you know, I don't know. I, I hard disagree. I guess I could. Yeah. Said. Okay. Well, I think uh, it makes a huge difference. And I also disagree in a way because as we watch them line up this straight. This is just a straight sidearm hole. Let's all be honest. But he needs to get the nose up. We've seen. I like this. This one's moving more right than I think in round three. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the double um, fist pump. But about James is when he would come off and just show up, it wasn't like he wasn't getting top tens. Mm. Oh, this is, needs a sit. This could be, looks like it could be safe. Okay. But he was always like a top ten guy. He would just kind of show up and then 
play really good. Maybe just not on the lead cards. I think yeah. that's just the visibility wasn't there. This has got that nose nose up angle that you're talking about, Nate. Yeah, I think that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's not that close though. Just missed one of those. Let's see if he can make the correction. Does Him. Proc have that distance? Oh yeah. yeah. Does he really? Oh yeah. Uh, I'd say so. Yeah, sure. Look at that. That's a long forehand through that tight gap. It's not just throwing a power forehand. It's guiding it. There's Corey's forehand. He's got the power. A little rollback, but that's a good approach from back there. He should be able to save the par. Yeah. Probably a good tree. That could have maybe gone in that little bunk. That's kind of what I was thinking. Might have been deep of it. Hard to tell. Not a great effort there from Gossage. That got the nose down really early. Adam, a little comfortable stepper, high and in. And he's going to retake that lead. First player to 22 under par. Yeah, Corey, I, yeah. I love save. the correction from Adam there. Missing it on the left side, not really committing, and then really putting it up high and right, letting it drop center. you got to be careful with how hard yeah. these guys putt, though, with that Just hyzer angle. That. I mean, that went in but as soon as the disc you can kind of see it upside down kind of flatten the chains it's it gets to be a scary thing a piece of advice that brian schweberger mentioned a long time ago when uh when we were noticing this certain type of basket just was prone to spit out and a couple of players were thinking oh no it's going to spit me out Schwebby said, make the basket spit you out. Instead of being scared about it happening, make the basket do it. And yeah. you know, more times than not, it will stay, obviously. Absolutely. Trying to trying to outsmart it doesn't really work. You just stay true to your putt. See if you can stripe a couple. Pull three, par three, 370, going uphill through the tight gaps. Early mandatory forces you left. OB also on the left. Coming from this floatiest putt I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> yeah. Nate's had five his whole career. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't get, I don't get scared. <laughs> this needs a little help. Not going to do it. The Guardians do their job. You really want this on an angle, moving from left to right around the trees. That'll give you your best, widest route into the basket. Flipping that up, finding a gap, slowing down right outside the circle. Proctor will have an opportunity to right the wrong he had on hole one with the miss putt. I like Gossage. this one. Yeah, really getting that low ceiling hammered down. Anheuser, let the disc do the work. Smoke that tree, though. And that was just kind of cruising deep. It, it did appear to be. Having a little life left, 370 feet down down the fairway. Corey's probably been Go thinking in. about getting back to this one and getting some revenge. Oh. oh my gosh, that was close. How did that miss? Was that short? Yeah. Gotta watch that again. No. Barely short. Oh, word. Corey said, I'm not going to take... Yeah, here we go. Not going to take a non-OB5 on this one again. Sneaks right oh. through... What? And it it kind of stayed close. Yeah. For Ace, how much for how much heat it had coming out of a flex through there, that was unreal. Ace round park jobs. That's like the coolest thing you can do. Would you put it above acing? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Nice. All right, Gossage. A better effort than two, but still not what he needs. Proctor with a very high up and down motion on his putt. Traditionally, that time getting slammed down a bit short. And Corey, unfortunately, unable. Now, I would say ace run to park job to then making the putt. Yeah, look at that. We talked about it. I mean, that's left side. That's yeah, left side. It is. But it's still through the chains, so that's a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. But ace run, park job, and then make the putt. That's that's the coolest. I would say his putt catches 
59% of the time. Mm-hmm. That one. On that on, exact yes. one. Yeah. 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 I'd say that sounds about right. Proctor, even after hitting the cage, still has a little bit of work to do. Bring in the heat in there. Two holes in a row. Don't want to play with that fire too much, but you'll take that uh, that confident putting stroke. Yeah, I think Corey's... What I'm trying to say is Corey's putt was better than it was bad. You know? It was, yeah. It, oh, was, yeah. it was nicer than it was a, just a bad putt. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that. That one? Yes. That Same could, spot. Sure. Mm-hmm. High. And it was harder, too. Corey's at, had a little softer pace there, so... Yeah. Four, par three, 450 feet. Low ceiling backhand is available to the players if they got a lot of power, but wide roller is also a popular play, though on a windy day like today, a lot of factors that you gotta consider when laying that roller down, especially with the OB long and left. It looks like it's a headwind again, like it was in round three. And that is why Adam is laying down the Anheuser backhand flex, and this is a beaut. I mean, that's so good, and he's far. Yeah. He's very far. Like, yeah. you're not going to get a lot close. I'm even going to go as far as to say, I don't think any of them get in a circle. Watch this. I was expecting him to park it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously. Decent. But, it, but yeah. the, the wind was to an effect of it takes a 500-plus foot low ceiling to get all the way there this one oh that might have had it somebody's got 500 feet low ceiling headwind gossage is one of those players i'd put on that list Corey Ellis, also another one of those names yeah doesn't he just bomb we oh, said oh yeah not that time he didn't really throw it that far at that time <laughs> he did have a different disc in hand from what he threw in round three. Let's see if he's able to save the par. This will take a really nice shot, and I think he's done pretty good work right there. Yeah. Yeah, this thing was just playing so hard. Indicated by the fact that it is the Second most challenging hole on the course. Oh, there wow. you go. Wow, yeah, wind direction and is the, the chief reason for that. Yeah, 3.16 average. And Adam Ooh. Hammes, what side of the tree is that going to fall on? The middle side. Well, what do we have here? If he's in there, the putt... <laughs> Okay, Whoa. what is going on? This is going to be kind of tough. Can he sit down and putt? I think his options are pretty limited. He can get a foot up there, or he can go behind the tree. Let's go. <laughs> the mammoths. He's, uh, this is wild. Corey, good par save on two and on four now. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. That was <laughs> the worst putt I've ever seen. Oh, <laughs> he went into the middle of the biggest <laughs> tree in the forest. Yeah. And now he's chilling in the top of it. <laughs> this is hilarious. We're just going to move past the fact that no. he just chucked it in the middle that, of the freaking tree. That was a terrible <laughs> effort. You are, you're dead on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta oh, love the honesty. There is going to be hilarious. some screenshots of that right there, folks. That was good stuff. And I got to give a shout out to Isaac Robinson, Ezra Aderhold, Calvin Heimberg, Simon Lazat. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you ridiculous. get there? Yeah, we're at a 45 footer. <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny. 
Checking in leaderboard. Corey Ellis, Isaac Robinson, he is back in the mix. He's just one back. Ooh, fun one. Tell us what we got here, Nate. Oh, I've watched this all day. Yeah, I was out there checking this one out. It's a really fun hole to watch. Hole five, par four, 910 down the hill. Stay short of the sand. A lot easier in the headwind today. Not a lot of players, I think, worrying quite as much. I saw a lot of people putting a little extra hyzer, bailing a little left and short, and then kind of letting that second shot be the more difficult decision time type shot on the hole if you're going to cross the river, right? The creek. Uh, yeah, the, the creek. The body pond. of water. <laughs> I think this one's also tough because of that. The mm. wind's pushing Oof. you farther left. That's good. 430, 450. You get the feeling like, oh, I can't get there, and then your disc flips up, and now the bunkers are actually maybe more in play than they would be before. Yeah, because you, of the flip and look the at power. That trust there from James. But that's How you much? can see the different style. Like on yeah. a calm day, there's no way he comes in with that kind of hyzer. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. He's trying to look for it to drift right. A good shot though. Should be in that 400 something foot range. Like this one I'm worried about, maybe. Sand? I don't think so. You don't? No, that's heading left. That's uh, yeah, okay. that's about where you want to be. Perfect, Him and James are in a really good spot, considering the, the headwind conditions. Corey, this, is, this one might be in a little bit of danger. Okay. Little Score. Bit. So Adam will be up first. For the green, you think? Yes. Yeah, of course. Look at this. Go in. Look at this wow. shot. Adam Hammes. Oh, Sit down. Do not roll OB long. Let's that was huge. What control from that range. Huge drift, right? All the way back. Oh, my just gosh. Just past the chains. And how close does this come? Two out of bounds. So oh, close. Oh, wow. I think that's going to be the scariest putt he's had since yeah. he threw it in the middle of a tree. Yeah. So, like, in the <laughs> last uh, seven, eight minutes. Yeah. It's going to be one of the scariest looks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's gone. Close to getting a little love from the stake. I'm a big fan of steak. So was my roller on hole 18. Mm. Blue bomber up high, swinging Can back. Spike. Can it spike? Okay. It Ooh. just clears the creek. I'm trying to think of a word that combines them all. It's just the pond of lake. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh. Somehow safe. Wow. Okay. That is so fortunate. There's a <laughs> lot of OB around there. Surprising errant throw. He gets to try it again. This time with something a little bit more overstable. You can see that wind just pushing oh. the disc down. And now he has a very challenging putt for the par. It'll be uphill into the headwind. Aaron didn't want to have anything to do with trying to give that a run. Just lays that one up. Proctor, what a save there. Great four. This is a good par on this day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good par any day. It's the hardest hole in the course. Is it? Mm -hmm. 4.36 average for the birdie. No, but he ran it. Gave it an effort. You're not going to see that putt missed high. Almost ever. Once again, Corey able to come up with another par save. I mean, he has just been able to rely on that so far this round, keeping him in the mix. Four pars, that's a good deal. Again, only four players with the birdie there. Jakob Samarad. Yuna Heinen, Andrew Presnell, and Justin Rozak. Only players to get to three. Hmm. That, that caught that on the good wobble for Proctor. Yeah. If it's on the downward swing of the wobs, you're done. Could be nubbed. Just snuck it in. 
1206, par 3, 415, going downhill with mandatories on both sides. Most common play here is the flex backhand for right-handers, a little bit of a Anheuser release with overstable disc, try to swing it back in late. Which is basically what Adam just did on that approach shot. It's looking really good minus that one. Goodness gracious, he was controlling that so well. Kind of the last tree he had to beat there. Yep. Look at that fast guy arm there. Yeah, it is a speedy arm. Zing. Beautiful. No one really throws it like him. He he, he like kind of like revs it up and then just unleashes. Yeah, how much he curls the wrist yeah. up. It's a it's a definitely a little bit different looking form. He's a big guy too. Mm hmm He's a big fella. Wow. That's a great shot. Long. Yeah, you don't see that very often, but it seems to be open back there, so go for it, man. I have not seen it ever. Is this overstable at the end? He's asking for it to lift, and it just doesn't quite have enough energy to get back to Heiser. Corey will be outside C2. I haven't seen any highlight long bombs. Corey Ellis is one player to provide those type of putts. Oh, oh wow. Almost a great call there. That Jeremy. was some really good commentary. Nearly on cue. Yes. Gossage, good straddle lean out. Tough putt. Yeah, if you guys notice, if we look over there to the right side, we see that Isaac Robinson is setting the pace actually Whoa. through eight. He's at 23 under par. He's in first place. So we do know that there are people out there pushing this lead group. So there's no time to relax. It was only a three shot lead for Adam coming into the round, but to already be trailing this far. Uh, thus far, it's, yeah, five under through eight for Isaac. That's getting it done in this win with these type of long distance holes so far. That's good stuff. It's one of the more unique tee shots on the course, I think. The two mandatories making it a pretty tight line going really steeply uphill to start, and it pays big dividends if you can clear all the way up to the top to where you could potentially see the basket or at least have some flat ground for your run up that doesn't sap your power trying to get up and over that rise all the way to the green. James Lowe, does it get a good skip? It does. Yeah, you're happy with that. I mean, it's not the greatest, but yeah, he's got the power to get there to the pin still. Yeah, for sure in play. This is much more what you're looking for, plus about another 50 to 80. Ooh, nice skip too. That's one of the longer ones I've seen with the air shot. Probably will have a skippy hyzer out wide from there. Fine, a little bit of a, a helping wind. I guess there was a helping wind in the prior hole as well. Ooh, man, this could really go. It, miss them. Miss them all. Miss these. Oh, man. Keep going, young fella. <laughs> That's huge. Oh, wow. That's for sure. What we said, that was one of the longest we've seen. Now we've seen. Now we yeah. Know. Well, does the longest non-roller? It just yeah. the roller. Just if you get the angle right, like Adam did, it's just going to keep going slowly. That's the biggest roller I've seen for sure mm -hmm. off this though. That's that's way up there. What and out he? left, I think he loves because it's just a forehand coming back. Yeah. What is he? Two fifty. Yeah. It's got to be something like if that. not less. Oh boy. A lot of work to do now, James. Hitting the high ceiling. Close to hitting the line. It's tough because of the uphill run up. You're running uphill and then to throw a low shot is, yeah. is one of the harder shots Jeez. to throw in our game. I, it's my least favorite, least favorite shot. Corey, good approach. Yeah, I like that because he had two options. He could go straight at it or he could go wide hyzer, which I'm wondering if Goss is, yeah, he's going wide hyzer. He's a little more pinched. Mm -hmm. Whoa, almost drawing the base. He'll also be putting from about the same range as the prior hole. All right, so where now 
Oh, not even Adam yet. We'll get there. I'm amazing. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah, that's gonna be mid C two. Weird. If not deep C two. Weird mistake there. Yeah, I can't blame that one on the run up. Oh, oh my gosh. Just a pitch with the zone. My word. That might not even be two hundred. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, that was definitely inside two ten tops. 500 up the hill. Wow. That does not compute, really. That's what a drive. crazy. And Proctor's par attempt slides deep. Very fast green, as you can see here. No grass to slow you down. Any misses are penalized with extra distance, and Gossage is not missing. Yeah, some really nice putts. These last two holes for Aaron. That's a scary sign for the competitors to see. That's for sure. Gossage. Oof. He's making them from 45 to 25. Pack a lunch, yeah. especially on styles of courses like these. I mean, he's able to just kind of pick them apart with easy hyzers. Not easy, but powerful stability penetrating through the wind and carrying a lot of distance without angles of, like, getting the disc turned over. That's a good putt there Three from Adam. birdies and the bogey here on seven. That is good work for our card. Obviously a big time slip up for Proctor right there in that moment when he's kind of in the mix. All of a sudden that bogey puts him four back of the pace set by this card. And if he's paying attention, Isaac Robinson's out there doing the same thing. Three guys now at 23 under par. Corey Ellis, 22, and Ricky Wysocki, nine under through 16. He's working his way up there. This is the new up to ice orbit. Look. At this very nice thing. King and <laughs> well, eight par four, six fifteen downhill with OB on both sides. Technically reachable if you want to get that aggressive with the big turnover that then fades back left at the end. You can maybe find yourself down there for a putt. See if any of these guys have that in mind or if birdie will be sufficient. Easiest hole in the course, but it can you can pick up a bogey on it with one errant shot. It's crazy that this is the easiest hole in the course with the out of bounds on both sides. Like it's like it's like not that easy. It's just the 615 downhill yeah. par four, I think. You know, because even if you go out of bounds, par is a, a pretty likely mm, yeah. outcome. That's, Adam just can't quite avoid those outer branches. Drops straight down. It's going to be a long road to the birdie from there. I think if these branches weren't here, it would play more over par <laughs> from people just ripping. Yeah, you know, maybe. That's interesting. And not, maybe. And not just having to aim low. It kind of it has some elements of the original genius hole from uh, Milo McIver that we just we saw the evil version of at the Beaver State Fling. But it's kind of a similar distance, similar type of shot that can succeed at getting down there for an eagle look. Adam going big, wide stally hyzer and puts it right inside the circle. That's a great effort from back there. Were there any birdies on that hole on the evil genius? Well, they changed the par at the final hour. Oh, uh, okay. So, yes. Were there but any threes? I don't believe there were any threes. Okay. Because that was every bit of a par five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good approach for Ellis. Now, not necessarily a routine forehand approach. Enough trees that are kind of like right in that annoying place. And there's one of them. Yeah, there's one that's more annoying than others and it's, he's he, he big guy it. big guy uh, we'll see how much of a straddle he has I, if you're at the right spot it's basically unmakeable behind mm -hmm. that tree yeah i like, think that was just a straight miss release anyway i don't think he had enough hyzer to bring it back i think he pulled it to the left yeah he's got room he's been making putts too and that time left good height
Wow. That was a thing of beauty. That was a laser. Yeah, that was hard. Yeah. And what a birdie. I mean, that that tells you why it's playing as the easiest hole. Because his drive was almost a disaster. Not out of bounds or anything, but he's yeah. still able to recover. Yeah. One big hyzer, nice putt, back to the birdie. And good birdie putts for Corey Ellis on the last couple. And Proctor needing the birdie here to bounce back. Gets him to 20 under par. So Gossage will be the only par in the group. Talking to himself there, trying to make a micro adjustment for that next putt, perhaps. Wasn't too far off on that one, but boy, that one was... Is that like, was that the perfect putt? It yeah. might have been. It had a tiny bit of nose up to kind of slow things down. Yeah, it was. Dead center, good pace. He's showing that composure. There's something about his, he, he's, he feels a little stoic right now. It, it doesn't seem like he's that concerned about the slow-ish start. He's still three under through eight holes, which is okay. But yeah, he, he's looking good right now. Hole nine. Straight up down the hill, then straight up the hill. You do have a couple mandatories to worry about, but these guys are going to be trying to throw little skip shots off that little dead spot or hyzer to the left. If they can hit this little dead spot, then you get a nice flare. If you don't, you got a long ways into a very guarded green. You can't even see the bucket even yeah. if you walk up 200 feet from where that drive is. It's like super guarded. There's a bunker that doesn't even matter up there, really. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is up there, but. Wow, what a shot. I don't think we've seen anything quite that far yet. That's way past that last shadow, just to kind of put things in perspective. I mean, look at that gap. Corey kept the ceiling low the whole way, but had the power to get 70 feet past that shadow. That's getting it done and that left side is actually a pretty nice place to be i think james is going to like that drive mm. i love it ah, there's ob left yeah oh i don't love it anymore then uh, i like it a lot <laughs> i love it <laughs> can't, it's tough to love something you can't trust you know that is very wise. Wow. That is very, very <laughs> I wasn't very expecting wise. that one, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Fast guy, speedy arm, zing past the basket is James. Oh, that was Adam. That, that was mine. Adam. No, he's that a, he's a big guy, though. Speedy arm, for sure. I think that's good, but we'll never know because that basket is so difficult to see from up here. Quick little shout out to the gallery who just absolutely showed up this week. Yeah, I mean awesome. there was a lot of look wow, at that. Look left it up, to look right. It, yeah, look it up there, and that's and there was there was people following almost every single card. And speaking of that gallery and all the great fans we have, I've been thinking a while about this. I am not going to keep the disc golf pro tour secret any longer Corey ellis bombs <laughs> he crushes it you know yeah. and i'm not just gonna sh i'm not just gonna be silenced no i we, we've been told hey guys we need you to you know he crushes it yeah he, they've been telling us to be quiet about it yeah i'm no longer i appreciate your courage no longer thank you nate we always oh, knew he could putt. Yeah. we always knew he could putt we just never really were told that he could bomb Coriolis has given him that opportunity to have his name in discussion at the end once again nine holes left to go and he has finished the front nine with a turkey Adam Hammes that great approach he has a stepper and knock the basket yeah. over Adam Hammes not, I don't think he's worried about those spitters no and not wow. a fun day to be a basket <laughs> <laughs> just getting smacked in the face. It, you said shout out, Paul, and you gave me a reminder. I completely glossed over Ty Love with the only two of the day on nine, and he went two for two for the Eagles on hole nine. 
in Get after incredible it, stuff. That's, Good stuff, man. That's awesome. That time he had to make a, make a putt from 50 feet. I think he was parked in round three. Four under, one hole. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and two plays. Mm-hmm. Wow. Leaderboard's looking aight. Yeah. But yeah. we got to take a look at those guys up at the top because I feel like it with though with like Calvin and Ricky running out of holes, the story's up top of those yeah. Four competitors. Yeah. We knew Calvin was going to get himself back in the mix. Mm -hmm. He's out there doing his his best. He's at seven under, I believe. But yeah, I think you're right. It's just a little bit too little, too late. That third round really cost Calvin his chances here to win in Portland. But man, we have got a very exciting final nine. As a reminder, I do not know what happens. I am very, very eager to get into this. So we want to thank you guys for watching. But let's go ahead and end this so we can start that back nine. Thanks to the Founders Club. We will catch you guys for the last nine holes of the Portland Open presented by Latitude 64 right now. Thank you.